with Eastwood, he's not going to walk in and, he, and he's five feet seven. You know that. He arrived in a taxi. He gets on the intercom and the receptionist said, hello, Watson Studio, who is it? And then he says, Eastwood. A lot of the details there, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, you don't know exactly the length. You have to try and do something that's memorable. If the picture becomes too complex, it's not memorable. If it's too simple, it's boring. You have to find this kind of hidden ingredient. I have a definite idea about what I want to do, but I'm always trying to let the model contribute because maybe the model suddenly contributes something that's better. It's nice when the color, it's nice that when you went into it. Yeah. There's a way that you can connect with people. Head up a little. If I'm taking your picture and I'd bring the camera to my eye, basically that's what you see of me. If the camera's on a tripod here, you're with me. I'm communicating And with then you. open them wide when you look up. It freed me up. There's something very nice about that. It's quite hard now because people that are fashion photographers just taking pictures on an iPhone. I prefer very high quality. In the long term, that image will last longer. The gigantic difference for me with the digital revolution was in the computer. I was far more excited about the computer than I was about the cameras. I was in a dark room for 50 years. Photographer's life is in a rectangle. You're either shooting vertical, horizontal, or square. Your big decision is what are you going to put in the rectangle? You know, we did this book, Cyclops. There's wrappers in here, there are landscapes in here, there are nudes in here, there are still lifes in here, there are conceptual pieces in here. It was all photography and it was all interesting. There's Charlotte, a French model that I worked with for years. It just seemed that every image of her was perfect. I had done a series of pictures with David Bowie and they were all powerful, surreal images. And the editor of the magazine who was at the shooting said, could we have something just completely different as the intro page for this? And Bowie said, what do you want me to do? And I said, well, I always think of you as being very kind of elegant. Maybe you should do something not so elegant. I just hit one frame of it, just like that, just very quickly. I was very happy to photograph somebody in the street, but then do 100 covers of Vogue magazine. All right, so let me just shoot the fish. So try and come right over the bowl. And I know that you're in an awkward position. That's it. Right there. OK, come back. The light's beautiful, you know? I'm always doing some kind of preparation. I'm always going through work. I'm always making notes, building boards from some of my favorite shootings. This is a shooting that we are revisiting. Right now, we're checking them, checking the quality of the print. I have to say it was a good shooting because it was well organized, well planned, and with good propping. Needs a little bit more contrast here. You've got to watch that the concept isn't too strong. You lose the human being in there. And there is something magical when you go back to the basics of a passport picture. The shot I did of Steve Jobs was bare bones passport philosophy. He was due at nine o'clock and at five to nine, the PR person came and said, I just want to let you know Steve hates photographers. So I was like, well, I can't, look, I can't do anything about that. I'm here to take his picture. So when he walked in, I said to him, I just want you to look straight in the camera and imagine that you're sitting across a table from 20 people that disagree with you, but you know you're right. He said, I do this every day. Just a few years later, of course, I got a call from Apple and they used that shot as the, the memorial shot. That's it. You know, it kind of bring the elbows quite tight to the body. That's it. It's OK, I think. Yeah, I think it's OK. Yeah, and I'll tidy him here. I'll clean this here. Looking back on it was something that I did that was really kind of a miracle. Harper's Bazaar magazine had contacted Hitchcock for their Christmas issue. I was very excited to get the job because it was my first job for a magazine. I'm amazed that I did what I did. He was a gourmet cook and he had a recipe for a goose. The headline for it was to be Hitchcock cooks his own goose. They said, look, we want him 
to have a silver platter with a goose on it, and he's holding it. And I said, that's fine. I called the art director back, and I said, isn't it better that he's got his hands around the goose's neck, and he's killed it himself? I said, OK, you're on. The editor loves that idea. And I think if it had a plate, I don't think it would be memorable. I think I was lucky enough to find something that I liked. Photographers don't retire. They just keep on going, you know?